I feel like in this upcoming season, arguably the biggest storyline is going to be how good the Lakers are with J.J. Redick in his first season, how good J.J. Redick is in, in his first year in the league, so on and so forth. Obviously, everyone has their questions when it comes to J.J. Some are more optimistic than others, but now that we got a two-game preseason sample size, people are starting to come up with their conclusions. I don't know if y'all, as Laker fans, have watched the preseason for the Lakers, have y'all seen like promising things with with Mr. JJ Redick? Sage, you want to take this one or no? No, no. Go ahead, go ahead, Tom. I ain't seen. You think I give a? You think I care? Until Rob Palenka addresses a lot of these issues, JJ Redick can go out there and run three man weave all game. I don't care what we do. I haven't took a look at what our offense is doing. I, malarkey. I don't trust this team this year. So, so no, I'm not hopeful. I, I'm I hot by the way, but it's not because you called him Jesus. It's not because you're, you believe in the team. Well, I don't either, by the way, it's, it's because he, again, and, and you fucking Laker fan crayon eating motherfuckers just fail to realize what I say until I say it for the 90th time and get proven. Right. That was a Lakers move. Like we've had such a Lakers off season. The idea that we're talking about JJ Reddick schematics in the fucking preseason, like, like that, like we're, we're we're doing this now. I thought we would be doing this after game one uh, or some shit. Like we're doing this in the preseason. Really, we're doing we're doing the Jesus thing. We're 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 getting the screenshots of LeBron and his kid. Oh my god, which was fire by the way. But then like we're gonna do it again week one, and then we're gonna do it again game four. Like we're doing all this shit in the preseason. Like, this is such a fucking Lakers season on the way, bro. I'm not excited for it. It's hot ass just because we're talking about it. He could be absolutely right. JJ Reddick could and probably is a better coach for this team than Darvin Ham was. I'm personally not a fan. Damo, I know you hate his guts. But reality that we're even talking about this right now. Ain't we supposed to be talking about Derrick Rose being better than fucking Ola Depot right now? Like, this is supposed to be, like, the final stretch. Ain't we supposed to be talking about Ben Simmons hitting jump shots in the gym or some shit? Why are we talking about the goddamn preseason Lakers and their coaching adjustments before the season started, bro? Oh, my God. Well, before, before Omar goes, let me, let me just ask y'all this as a general preseason question. Can you even take anything away from preseason? Or are y'all on some, yes, yeah, fucking preseason? At, at least, like, no, the first, absolutely. like, five games, like. You, know. yeah, you absolutely could take something from every game of the preseason for any team, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, you can see, especially for the young guys, you can see who's really a player versus like some of the actual competition uh, that they have to face. That's not summer league or G League or whatever the case may be. Um, I, I know they're they're coming from a perspective as Lakers fans, but it actually is refreshing to see um, JJ Redick be able to implement and have the team run some things even if they don't always lead to success or whatever the case may be i'm i'm gonna go out here and say it um a lot of people will be proven wrong and are proven wrong already based off of this one game and if i'm not mistaken i might be one of those people that was proven wrong jj i, I think that there probably was no question about jj knowing basketball but the ability to implement it is still very much impressive like it, he looks better than Doc Rivers, right? He looks better than uh throw throw another coach out there that's like a Do you think you're better than two? Steven Silas. Mm. Steven Silas. Darvin Ham. Silas. <laughs> oh, oh you're Darvin Ham, Ham. yes. And, and my they could be player coaches or but ultimately he looks better than a lot of coaches already. Specifically, if we're talking about players coaches, like ex players that turned into coaches or whatever the case may be, he looks he looks leaps and bounds better than them. So I'm, I'm Monty. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm glad that he's able to come in, throw some schematic stuff in there, um, try to create a younger offense, a more modernized offense. Now, is that going to work with Berlon James and Anthony Davis? That is secondary to the point to me. Even if it doesn't work out for the Lakers, I would love to see him, you know, on another team, maybe some younger players. Uh, and see what he could get out of them offensively just because of what I've already seen in a couple games. Oh, I, I like it already. It's better than Steve Nash. I'm, I'm going to keep telling uh, everybody here, and this isn't even me combating what you just said. It's just, again, I obviously think J.J. Redick knows basketball. I think it's very dishonest when people look at the people that have the microphones in front of them, especially ESPN, and just say they know nothing, like 
donut. It's like, all right, bro, especially a former player who mm -hmm. is having the takes that you would tweet. So I think everyone and their mother knows that JJ Redick at least knows basketball. And Omar had a good point about implementing it into the game. I even think at this point, he probably is going to end up being on the better side of a Lakers coach. The issue is, again, this is a topic that like, we're, we're already microscop watching every schematic play that JJ has or whatever. If you can be happy as a Lakers fan, but like, I just, I, I think for me, it's hard for me to, um, verb verbiage, talk, illustrate, whatever my frustration, because I already just see the bullshit down the lane. I guess that's where I'm coming from. I already know that this is the first domino today. I'm going to get, Oh, you say you're hating all, say you're being a Grinch, whatever. Cool. I know I'm going to get that today. And then a month later, when you niggas are talking about that one game that he made that one bad timeout and you want to fired, that's what we're going to be talking about. Or that one game where whoever the fuck our backup guard is this season just sells out and Bronny should have played all along. And then you guys are going to, I just see the bullshit. So that's why I'm calling it hot ass. I just, I just, hey, you listening in the background, come here real quick. I've got an offer for you from prizepicks.com the favorite daily fantasy sports platform for the Let's Keep It A Buck podcast. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players is what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. And we're going to show you how to make our prize picks right now. Ever since Kirk Cousins touched down in the A, he's been playing my way. I've got Kirk Cousins <laughs> and passing yards going for the more every single week. And you know our Crosstown rivals can never get any love from me, so I'm taking less on anything Alvin Kamara related. Rushing yards, give me less, B-Souls. We're going to go ahead and put $10 on this lineup, click Submit Lineup, and boom, that is how you make a lineup on Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com and use code LKIB to receive a guaranteed $50 once you place a $5 lineup. Remember, that's code LKIB on Prize Picks, and tell them Omizi sent you. I just want to say, Omar, I see exactly where you're coming from and the point you're trying to make with that. As a Laker fan... And as a person that was not upset about the J.J. Redick hiring, so I didn't have doubts with him, I'm looking past that. Like, him being able to come there and implement an offense or implement a system is so beyond – I'm so past worrying about that with the coach because I didn't have question marks about him only having the experience of coaching middle school basketball. I didn't have the question marks about him being that young of a coach coming into that situation. Like, everyone else was telling me how much of a red flag it was. I'm like, hey, I trust J.J. So I'm kind of looking past that. And the real writing on the wall is we are a piece away from really being a contender, especially with how loaded the top of the West is. So just having JJ come in there and prove he's better than Darvin Ham, gang, I thought all four of us is better than Darvin Ham. I, I'm <laughs> not moved by that. My question with JJ Redick has never been like the X's and O's. It's always been like, I guess, the soft skills when it comes to being a coach of like, yo, you have to be. And he, he, he might as well or he has the ability to prove me wrong this upcoming season. But the ability to, like, rally your troops and develop chemistry within the locker room. I think that's that was a really big talking point that we had last year with a guy like Monty Williams. You know, the locker room losing faith in him. That's why he was uh, fired. It wasn't because he knew basketball or any of these things. It was how he managed that locker room. And J.J. being put in that position in L.A. And I don't know if y'all seen that starting five, uh, Doc. I, I still need to see more of it. But I did get to see a glimpse of what LeBron is like on the court and how he affects, you know what I'm saying, like how he talks on the bench and things of that nature. I don't know. I, I got my questions on, like, how coachable LeBron is in terms of, you know, like he thinks he knows what's best for the team. So how coachable is he? Also, I need to see how JJ looks once he gets, uh, metaphorically speaking, punched in the face when it comes to basketball, like uh, from an adjustment standpoint in the playoffs. Um, because... That's, that's a big part of the job. That's a big reason as to why motherfuckers hated Darvin Ham. So he can implement, you know, the system properly and all these different things. But once we're in the playoffs, can you make those proper adjustments that you need to for a championship, uh, for a team that has championship aspirations? So. Oh, I hate it here. I just, I, I, last thing I'm going to say, I, I just think that the people, I, there's so many preconceived notions about having a player coach somebody who's coming out of, and this is their first time playing and ultimately it'll be graded at the end of the season. Um, I just think for, for me, at least I know there'll be some obstacles and some hurdles. There will be a discrepancy between Brian and JJ, all that's going to happen. But so far I'm thinking back on all the player coaches. And so far he's just, he, he has been the best one in my recent memory, outside of like, if you want to reach for Steve Kerr, but even when Jason Kidd first started, Jason Kidd was not 
good out the gate. Like he was, and he just became good um, this really like this year in Dallas or whatever the case may be. Uh, Luke Walton wasn't good. He just got the Warriors, and then when he got to the next stop, he was ass. Um, Darvin Ham, he recently became a first time player head coach, like head coach. So like I'm, I'm I think he's just dispelled a lot of those narratives, um, given more opportunity for that, and it's it's. It'll come up later in the conversation that we have about Shannon Sharp and Cam Newton and stuff like that. Um, it'll become very, very relevant um, to the conversation, the same conversation. But let's, you know. Okay. 